Hey, what's up everybody, it is Mr. Boylan, and today, what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We are going to describe the postulates of kinetic molecular theory. Again! Okay, this time we're gonna look at it in a little bit different light. We're gonna describe the kinetic molecular theory and use this theory to describe the properties of a substance in different states of matter. Solid, liquid, gas. Two, we are also going to interpret heating and cooling curves and apply the postulates of the kinetic molecular theory to these curves. And then three, we're going to interpret what are called phase diagrams and apply the postulates of kinetic molecular theory to phase diagrams. So still a lot of KMT. Guess who's back? And he brought a friend. Okay, so remember that kinetic molecular theory is based on the idea that particles of matter are always in motion. And although our focus in this unit is always on the gas phase, it's important to think about how kinetic molecular theory applies to other states of matter. Yes, there is more than one state of matter. So let's go back to our sample of neon gas and sort of debunk a common misconception that a lot of students have. When they think of neon, or they think of the other noble gases, or many other things that exist at gases at room temperature, they think that they can only exist as gases all the time. But the reality is, those gases can exist as liquids or solids if we get them cold enough, or if we add enough pressure. The big takeaway is, regardless of if you're in the gas phase, the liquid phase, or the solid phase, any state of matter has a given amount of kinetic energy. I call this one, the solid. Do the liquid! And when you really need to clear the dance floor, do the gas. And back to chemistry. Okay, so a graph of the temperature of a system versus the amount of heat added is called a heating curve. Now, we'll talk a lot about heating curves when we get to thermochemistry. But right now, I want you to look at this heating curve of water and recognize that we've got temperature against heat added. And as you interpret what's going on in this heating curve, the more heat that we add gets us to the different phases or the different states of matter for water. And for today's lesson, I just want you to think about how much relative kinetic energy each phase of matter would possess. Solid, liquid, gas. All right, another really important graph to think about as we think about kinetic molecular theory and changes of state are things called phase diagrams, where we graph pressure versus temperature, and it sort of shows us the conditions under which the state of a substance exists. Again, the great thing about phase diagrams is it helps us to better understand what sort of pressure conditions and what sort of temperature conditions we would need in order to see any of the phases of that substance. Now currently, you're looking at the phase diagram for water, and we're pretty close to one atmosphere, and at room temperature, we see water in the liquid state. Recognize that when you get colder, or once you reach about zero degrees Celsius, water will begin to freeze at one atmosphere pressure. And as you heat things up, uh, for water, once you get to 100 degrees Celsius, we move into the gas phase. You should recognize that although we live in this very small range of one atmosphere pressure, we might experience a, a little bit of deviation from that depending on, on whether or not we live at a, a higher elevation or a lower elevation, but we live at pretty much at very narrow range. But notice how if you made pressure changes or temperature changes, how you could affect the state of matter for the given substance. As you look at your notes, you're given a couple of additional phase diagrams for both iodine and carbon dioxide. Now we'll take a look definitely at carbon dioxide in class, but again, I just want you to think about how this compares to the phase diagram we just observed for water. Again, at one atmosphere, which is pretty close to the pressure that we experience here in Round Rock, Texas, notice that we sort of skip the liquid phase. Carbon dioxide is one of those substances that will sublime or go right from the solid state to the gas state and skip the melting process altogether. It's not to say that you can't have liquid carbon dioxide, but you would just need to, you would just need to vastly increase the pressure in order to liquefy carbon dioxide. Always a quick shout out and to reference where I pulled those images from that you're looking at in your notes. I mean, just look at those particles. It's just, I know, just look at them. They're just, they're just moving and bouncing off of one another. What? What do you mean you don't like chemistry?
Who doesn't like chemistry now? Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs>